Let's say you want to make barbacoa tacos, but you don't feel like digging a pit, putting all the dirt on the side, burying the meat, filling it back up, and then letting it cook for hours and hours and hours. What do you do? Barbacoa, amazing, unctuous. You know, actually, I looked up the term unctuous the other day and it meant like slimy mouthfeel. And that's not what I mean. I mean like fatty, delicious mouthfeel. Anyway, we're gonna use a pressure cooker. We're gonna cook this beef. I shouldn't have done that. We're gonna cook this beef, it's just a different cut. They're gonna be tremendous. Honestly, tremendous. You're gonna wanna make this almost the best tacos you'll ever have, almost. The birria ones we made were pretty spectacular. These are birria-like, but uh, actually easier. So, oh, sorry. I got lost in my thoughts for a second. Uh, we should start, right? Yeah. We get everything in the pressure cooker. Then we make our own roasted tomatillo salsa. Then everything comes out, goes, we're eating, and then we're out. Beef, first off. And here's what we're using. How's it look? Beautiful. Beefy, right? I mean, clearly there's some fat here that we're gonna get rid of, but any guesses at this point what cut this is? And I, I, no rump. None of us know. Hump, I said. You ready? We sit in front of a pile of beef cheek. Oh. Ah. And not like ass cheek, like cheek cheek, face cheek. And by the time this goes through the pressure cooker, it's gonna be tremendous. But we don't want all this extra fat. Some fat, yes. Extra fat, no. Like silver skin, no, not really. So we're gonna end up cutting it up. So let's do this. And it, it's kind of, I mean, I don't know, maybe horrifying is the term. If you didn't have this, if you did not have access to this, you could use a chuck, like a big piece of chuck and trim most of the fat from it. But as I'm saying, we do wanna leave some. We'll be okay with that. Like this is good, like here, no, not really. Don't want this part, sort of, little bits are okay. We're just gonna clean this guy up a bit. Uh, but for sure over here, this is silver skin. So just get your knife underneath. And you're gonna just try and get that. Fat ultimately will melt, that's fine. Silver skin like this is not going to, it's gonna be tough and difficult to deal with. So I should have a fillet knife for this. That would be so much easier and I don't have one. So like this, right? You pull it up, we'll get some of that away. See, now look at what you've got. Hold on, get rid of this. And when you start to clean it up a bit, you get it? It's a cheek. It's even the shape of a cheek, basically. If I took this, made it bigger, it'd be that. So, keep cutting, keep getting rid of the fat, then we move on. All right, so I, uh, I switched to a fillet knife because it really is the easiest way to get through some of this silver skin. And this is not necessarily a particularly attractive process. What's that expression? You don't want to see the sausage being made? Yes. It's something like that, right? Just a couple extra little pieces off and we'll be fine. And then we can move on to taco excellence. All right, we've got this set. Let's just throw this in the pressure cooker and start adding everything else. All right, so the rest of everything is gonna look like this. It's gonna look like about a teaspoon or so of kosher salt and pepper. I know that looks like a lot, but that's mixed. Those are some of both. We're gonna put in some cumin. Maybe a teaspoon, our favorite Mexican ingredients. About the same of Mexican oregano. I like to break it up as it goes in. We're gonna take a couple fat cloves of garlic. Give them a quick munch, like that. Throw them in. Wouldn't that be a Beautiful. Crunch? It would be a, a munch? I don't know what it would be. We need a bay leaf in all this nonsense. That was a small one. We'll put two small ones in. I need some lime juice, but I gotta break them up because they're not perfect. So you roll them, breaks up the fibers inside, and then when you cut them, you get juice like this. Nice. Another lime. I just got schooled by Max for going too fast. I feel pretty bad about that. Not too bad, but pretty bad. Okay, not bad at all. Gonna throw some cilantro in here, and I'm very happy using some tops and some bottoms. Lots of flavor, it's gonna be great. Whole thing's gonna be amazing. And then the other thing I like is some chipotle. This is already minced. This is about a tablespoon of minced chipotle. That we'll throw in. Last but not least, two cups of beef broth. 
Let me tell you something. Without liquid, you do not have a pressure cooker. So now here for me, everything just gets mixed a bit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's get this seated in our pressure cooker. We put the lid on. We lock it. Let's see. We want to go to high pressure, and then we're going to give it 5-0 minutes and hit start. And remember, it's loose now, but when it comes to pressure, the lid locks. You can't take it off. When it counts down to zero, it starts to manually release the steam, and that's what you want. Just leave it alone. So I don't know if I said it, but if you didn't have beef cheek, uh, you could definitely use, like, a chuck. Eh, cut it up. You'll be fine. It's going to be the same. Will it be the same-ish? Flavors, yes, that kind of stuff. Tenderness, it'll be pretty close. It'll be good. You can find it. it because uh, cheek is difficult to find. I had to go to a Mexican market here in San Diego to find it. A, uh, a Western supermarket did not have it. So, But while I was at that uh, Mexican market, stay there, Max, I did buy this pack of ridiculously fresh, still warm corn tortillas that we'll make these on, and it will be a freaking dream. Go to other people's supermarkets, ladies and gentlemen. It's one of my favorite things to do. Asian markets, Russian markets, uh, Mexican markets, whatever, Japanese markets. Just go. You'll be, you'll be blown away by the stuff that they have. And there's always food to go. Always. And that's really some of the best part of it. Okay, but now we're going to make a uh, tomatillo salsa, roasted. And it, a tomatillo looks like this. It's cute, isn't it? Inside of this papery husk that you peel off is a thing that looks a lot like a green tomato, but a sticky green tomato. Look, my finger's holding up the, the husk with that, and there's this stickiness on the outside that is gross. A quick rinse under running water. We'll get rid of that. We'll put them on our baking sheet, and we'll add the other items. So they look like this. Here's our guy. This is a little pull tab, really. Get rid of that and just carry on. I don't get why they're sticky. I don't know why they're sticky. They're kind of in the, the tomato-ish family. And it's a, um, it's a tangier version of really a tomato. And it's really good, especially in this little easy salsa we're going to make. I like it a lot. All right. Get these guys. We'll get our baking sheet here, and we'll rinse here. There's a fly. Everywhere. Did you see him? Yeah. Okay. These guys on here. Beautiful. We're going to add a jalapeno hole. We're going to add a serrano hole. And now here's the deal. The jalapeno is not as hot as the serrano. I like the combination of the two if you want it more hot. Add just serranos. If you want it less hot, add just jalapenos. But I find that little mix right there works just fine for me. We want to add some garlic, whole cloves. Oh my gosh. All right. This is how you're going to be. I break my hand doing this. Great. Okay, so we want these guys. You can leave them in their paper in here. They're fine. You've, we've roasted garlic before. Same kind of process. Right? I don't know. We'll put three or four on here. Try and get bigger ones. I think this guy's great. Okay, so we've got garlic. We've got these guys. We've got these guys. It's nice to put, I think, a little piece of onion and a little white onion. We're going to put some raw onion. We're going to put some raw white onion in after. But if you just take a piece like this, Get rid of this papery nonsense like that. I'm gonna cut, throw these guys on here. Last thing, just a tiny bit of avocado oil. Yes, it's chosen, of course, our fave. Okay, a little bit of oil is good. Everybody's happy. Into the oven under the broiler about that far away, about three, four minutes till it's brown. Flip it over, do it again. And we're uh, almost there. And after about three minutes-ish, that's what we're dealing with, exactly what we want. So everybody just gets turned over. Hello, my little friends. Yes, onion or serrano, buddy, or jalapeno, and then the garlic. Everybody turns over. Come on, you P 
Chisa. And back in they go. So that side now looks like the first side. There we are, done. Beautiful? Yes. Beautiful, yeah. So here's the deal. Everything goes into our processor because we need to uh, blitz this up. So the tomatillos, in they go. Little onion. So the garlic, we don't want in here. We want the gorgeous pulp all roasted perfectly. So we just peel off the outside, squeeze out the gorgeous softened garlic on the inside. Oh man, the smell here. Oh, roasted garlic is really like the best thing ever. Nice. And now we've got these, the Serrano. So you can choose to deal with seeds or without seeds. How are we feeling today, lads? Seeds, no seeds. Well, I'm feeling frisky today. Okay, so let's go seeds from both the Serrano and the jalapeno, yes? Yeah. yeah. Look, they just get soft and tender and really something else. Okay, in they go. The lid goes on. Contact, and we blitz. And then take a look. Look. So the question is, how thick do you want it? If this is too thick for you, then what could you do? You could add a little agua, a little chicken broth, whatever you want. I kind of like it like this. So I think I'm just going to give it one more quick little whiz. Beautiful. Okay, step two. So out we come and we go into our bowl. We'll scrape down the sides of the processor or as we say in Canada, the processor. Get all this gorgeousness out. And it smells so good. I know what we're getting into here. It's gonna be amazing on these tacos. Now, we add a little chopped white onion just to give it a little bite, a little bite, not too much. And some cilantro and the juice of about a quarter of a lime. Unless it's a shitty lime, and then you can use the other half of the quarter. Now we mix. Oh, snap. That shit is fresh as. Now you've got gorgeous homemade tomatillo salsa that'll be going on our tacos as soon as the uh, beef cheek nonsense is ready. Ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? Because this is ready. And I can smell that it's ready. It's been wafting up into our noses for, I don't know, about half an hour now. Now we open it, we take it out, and then we eat magically. Oh, look. Look deep down into the cavern. Oh boy, can you see that happening? Okay, watch. I'll do this in front of you. Right here, put it down. And now look, just with the side of the tongs. That, that's what this is all about. So here's how this happens. We take a knife, we cut. Oh God, boys, the smell? Crazy. Unreal. It's not me. I mean, it's not just me. No, we didn't uh, bury this in the ground, but boy, is it gonna be good. So now we take a fresh corn tortilla and some of our meat. Oh boy. Just like this, nice little pile of it, right? Now you've got your options. I think you'd definitely go with some white onion for that little bite. Always a little cilantro for me because I'm a fan. I know lots of people don't like it. If you hate it, don't have it. What would this be without a little bit of our homemade tomatillo salsa? Right there. And then a little baby piece of lime, squeezed, or is it squoezed, right on top. Look at that. Holy shit. I'm salivating. My mouth is watering. I'm so ready for that. What the hell? Let's go for it. 